Some men are driven by loyalty, or the need to protect their loved ones, or even their home, while others chase after more selfish things, such as riches and power. One such man was Grima, and he was ready to go so far as to betray his people, his king, and his homeland of Rohan, for the promise of wealth and status. Hello friends, it's Carl here, and in today's episode, we'll be exploring the history of Grima Wormtongue. So Grima was the son of Galmund, and he was born in the land of Rohan. He was known to be a very cunning and wise man, and these traits would help him to become the chief advisor of King Theoden. At first he was a loyal and true servant to his king, and he tried to fulfill his duties to his utmost abilities. Yet his position in the court of Edoras caught the attention of Saruman, who desired an instrument through which he could control and manipulate Theoden and Grima seemed like the perfect tool for his plans. Saruman needed to find a way to corrupt him and entice him to enter his service, and so he tempted him with the promise of riches, power, and the one thing he desired above all, Eowyn's hand in marriage. In return, Grima would have to spy on Rohan while poisoning and manipulating Theoden's thoughts so that he could act as a proxy through which Saruman could exert his will upon these lands. His evil whispers would consume Theoden's mind, and over the years the king became weaker and powerless as Grima played upon his fears and regrets, driving Theoden to doubt himself and his closest allies. It's possible that Grima might have learned some form of magic or speechcraft from Saruman, which could have helped him to deceive Theoden and to sway his will, and Tolkien also mentions that Grima might have used subtle poisons to induce or increase Theoden's weakness. Now as Grima's whispers consumed Theoden, he was left in a decrepit state, and a far cry from the mighty king that he once was, and Grima convinced him that he was too weak to use a sword, and so he took it from him and he stored it in his chest. Many other treasures of Rohan were lost and went missing, as Grima pilfered them from the halls of Edoras, and some of their most precious treasures, such as the heirlooms and jewels of Earl the Young, the first king of Rohan, were sent to Saruman in Isengard. For a while, Grima was able to maintain this lie that Saruman was an ally of Rohan, though after Gandalf escaped from Isengard, he travelled to Edoras to inform King Theoden of Saruman's betrayal. This news threatened to unravel Grima's plans, and so he tried to discredit Gandalf, and he accused him of being a warmonger whose influence grew while others were troubled. He claimed that Gandalf enjoyed bearing bad news, without providing any real useful help, such as weapons and horses, and that he was simply a beggar that wasn't welcome in Edoras. Even though Grima's plans and deceit might have worked on the king, some of the men of Rohan, such as Eomer, began to grow suspicious of his motives, and they would try to act against them. And so Grima had to change his tactics, and he would start to whisper different commands to Theoden, commands that would weaken Rohan, by delaying its defenses and preventing them from mustering their strength, which left their lands exposed to the armies of Saruman. Now Gandalf's arrival could still disrupt Saruman's plans for Rohan, and Grima knew that he must travel to Isengard in haste to inform his master of this new threat. Yet before he could reach Isengard, he came across the Witch King, who was seeking information on the Shire, and Grima was so terrified by the Nazgul's presence that he gave up its location. The Witch King now had the information that he needed, and he chose to spare Grima's life, not out of mercy, but because he knew that Grima might still serve a useful purpose. After all, he was an evil man, and the Witch King felt that he was likely to cause great harm to Saruman if he was spared, and that he was too terrified to speak of their meeting. Now thanks to Grima, the shadow of Isengard stretched far across Rohan, though their plans could still be threatened by Eomer, the king's nephew, and Theodred, the king's son. Grima needed to find a way to discredit them in Theoden's eyes, and he began to whisper lies. Yet even in his weakened state, Theoden's trust could not be wavered, for he knew that both his son and his nephew were incredibly loyal to him. Since he wasn't able to turn Theoden against them, Grima needed to find a new angle through which he could create conflict, and he tried to make it seem like Eomer and Theodred were at odds with one another. 
He hoped that this would convince Theoden that Eomer was trying to increase his authority and influence, and that he was acting without consulting the king and Theodred. Now while Grima weakened Theoden's trust in his nephew, Saruman Zurukai had managed to slay Theodred in the first battle of the Fords of Isen, and with his dying breath, Theodred sent a message to his father. In it, he asked the king to send all the Rohirrim that could be spared to the Fords of Isen under Eomer's command, so that they could set up a strong defense and withstand Saruman's forces. Yet once more Grima meddled in this, and he delayed any reinforcements. And if this message had gone through, then perhaps the second battle of the Fords of Isen might have never been lost. When Theoden learned of his son's death, he fell into despair, and Grima took advantage of his sorrow, and he used it to turn Theoden against his closest confidants, so that he would only rely on Grima from now on. He also harmed the chain of command, and he whispered orders in the king's ears, which were passed on to Hama, the captain of his household, and eventually to the marshals of the mark. And through this, Grima was able to subtly control the most powerful people of Rohan, and they had no choice but to obey these commands, even though they resented them. By now, the men of Rohan could see Grima's manipulation, even though they could do little about it, and they began to call him Wormtongue out of disdain, and Grima's evil whispers were also used upon Eowyn, for he poisoned her thoughts with the fall of her house, and she began to see her life like a shrinking trap. I imagine that he wanted her to feel helpless, so that she too would become dependent upon him. Now since Grima effectively controlled Rohirrim through Theoden, he ordered them not to intercept the Urukai that were carrying the hobbits to Isengard, though luckily, Eomer chose to disobey these commands, and he threatened to kill Grima on the halls of Edoras. These actions could not go unpunished, and under Grima's advice, the king imprisoned Eomer, and so the final obstacle that could resist Grima had now been overcome. I imagine that for a while, it seemed to Grima like his victory was guaranteed, and I'm sure that he must have been shaken when he heard the news that Gandalf and the Three Hunters were approaching Edoras. Through Theoden, Grima proclaimed that no strangers would pass through the gates of Edoras, and he gave orders that their weapons must be confiscated, including Gandalf's staff. Luckily, Gandalf would manage to convince the guards that he needed his staff for support, and he would later use it to free Theoden from Grima's influence, and Wormtongue's plans began to unravel. Since Theoden had regained his mind, he offered Wormtongue the chance to prove his loyalty by fighting beside him, and Grima knew that he was cornered, and that there was no way that he could escape the situation with words, and so he spat at the king's feet and fled from Edoras and he was last seen traveling with a company of orcs as they marched towards Isengard. His relief would soon turn into horror, for when he arrived at Isengard, he found that this fortress was destroyed by the Ents, and before he could run away, Treebeard intercepted him for questioning. Grima tried to deceive him by claiming that he was a messenger of the king on important business, and that he was the only man that was brave enough to risk this journey. Though Treebeard did not fall for this deception, for Gandalf had already warned him about Grima, and so Treebeard offered him a choice, to either wait with him until Gandalf returned, or to rejoin Saruman in Ortank, and Wormtongue chose to join his master, and the two of them would know at each other's minds, as they were stuck within this tower. When Gandalf and Theoden confronted Saruman outside of Ortank, Wormtongue threw its palanter down at them, and this enraged Saruman, for it was one of the most precious and important treasures of Isengard. Their relationship would slowly worsen, as Saruman became verbally and physically abusive towards Wormtongue, and even though Grima hated him and wanted to leave his service, his fate was tied with that of his master. They would travel together to the Shire after the ring's destruction, where Saruman had set up a sphere of influence through a band of ruffians and he would order Wormtongue to assassinate Loto, who was the Hobbit chief, by stabbing him while he slept. Frodo and his companions would manage to rally their countrymen to rise up against Saruman's rule, and after they confronted him, Frodo offered Wormtongue to rest in the Shire for a while, since they weren't aware of any harm or evil deeds that he committed, and Wormtongue seemed to consider this 
before Saruman revealed the part he played in the assassination of Loto, and he called him a worm and said that Grima was his puppet as he kicked him in the face. In that moment, something snapped inside of Wormtongue, and he turned on Saruman and stabbed him to death, before he too was shot and killed by the hobbit archers that surrounded them. Anyway friends, this wraps up today's video and I hope you enjoyed it. What do you think about Grima's character? Was he simply a corrupt man? Or would you describe him as truly evil? And did you enjoy his portrayal in the movies? Or do you think his story was better in the books? As always, I'd like to thank my patrons who have really helped to elevate this channel. It wouldn't be the same without you. And I would like to express how grateful I am for your support. Especially our wizard tier patrons. T. Gorman, Mike Feeney, Roland Mervold, and Jacob Williams. If you too would like to help support this channel while unlocking some cool perks, I'll be leaving a link to my Patreon page in the video description below. I'll also be leaving links to our Instagram, Facebook, Discord, and Twitter communities. So follow us if you'd like to have some extra Lord of the Rings content in your day-to-day -day lives. As always, if you enjoyed this video leave a like and subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together we'll once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.